I was not able to pronounce, uh, two or three times I would ask. The reason was that the students would hurriedly tell their names. So that is always working. Secondly comes pause. If, I tell, if you ask my phone number and I tell you 967677, did you get it? Most of the time when I ask my students for the phone numbers, that is what they say. Always remember you are speaking, you are passing the information. And while you are passing the information, you have to be loud and clear and there is something called pause. Pause is stopping in between the sentences and in between the words. Again, I will take you back to our Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. What is wrong in that? He is an intelligent person, right? All of us, you know, full of brains. But when he is communicating, when he is talking, we don't find it interesting. Why? He takes a long pause. He says two words, and there is a long gap than other two words he speaks. By the time he speaks other two words, we fail to disconnect what he spoke. Same thing happens with our present PM also. The pause is too long. So the pause, it has to be normal, not very fast, not very slow. If I say, my name is Rekha, I am a teacher. What I say? If I say sentences, I inform you about myself, you will forget. So it is very important for you to understand whether it is an interview or whether you are talking to someone, the pause has to be moderate. Neither too fast, neither too slow. Clear? What is the first point? Very good. Second point? Pause. I need to go back to Obama or Sashi Theroux. They have beautiful pauses. They know where to stop and where not to stop, where to rush and where not to rush. Now comes the third one, it is called intonation. What is it? What, uh, anyone can tell me what is intonation? Okay. Uh, in the movies, English movies especially, where we have robots, how does a robot speak? Hi, how can I help you? Right? If your teachers take the class like that, will you be acting in the class? No. So intonation is very important. Intonation is a very simple thing. While we are talking, sometimes we raise our voice and sometimes we drop our voice. I'll tell you when to write, first you concentrate. I'll give you the notes later, okay? First, I want you to listen to me. So intonation is raising the and dropping the voice. So once you have perfect intonation, there is a beauty in your language. It is going to be attractive and it adds the correct meaning. For example, if I say, what's your name? What is your name? What is your name? Did you find the difference? And again, she is a good teacher. She is a good teacher. Did you find the difference? Once I'm taunting, oh, she is a good teacher. That means, oh my God, she is not, right? She is a good teacher. Yes. So with the intonation, you can communicate positive or negative things also. So what is the first thing we learned? <laughs> then comes your body language, which is very, very, very important. Whenever you come on the stage or whenever you go for an interview, take your own time. When you are going for the interview, that 5 minutes or 10 minutes is your time. No need for you to hurry up. Suppose when you come over here for public speaking or addressing a camera, slowly you come up on the stage, cool, relax, few seconds, just look at the audience and then you can start your talk. It is not at all compulsory for you to immediately start your talk. And again, let me tell you, whenever, at least in the initial stages when you are speaking or addressing the public, it is very normal for you to get nervous, but it is okay, it will happen. All of us, we go through it, but again, we make it a point not to show it up. It should not come out, that is it. And again, it is very important, for example, you are giving a presentation for the first time in your college. It is very important, very necessary, that you have to have lots of practice. There is a reason behind that. If you don't have enough practice, 
you come and deliver a job and it is not okay. You are making mistakes. What happens? Psychologically you go down. Yes. Second time you fear. If first time you have so much to practice in front of the mirror, it is very important to practice in front of the mirror. Even now when I go for my commentaries, I do that. Almost since 20 years, I'm into commentaries and all, but I make it a point even now, like I can pick up a mic and talk, but no, I don't take the chance. I have my script, I imagine, stand in front of the mirror and I be myself. And again, now you have got your mobile phones, recording the cities there. During my days, nothing. So just mirror, friends, parents, I still remember troubling my parents, I would have a script, I would go to my father, my dad, my brother, sisters, they would in fact say, oh my god, please get out. That is how I used to. At the end of the day, we have to prove, we have to work out and successful we want to be. So that is the reason. So don't give it up, you have to be uh, very good in your practice. And once you are practiced, you come on the stage, if the first show is successful, second one, even if it is a flop, it is okay. Because you have a comparison, you know that the first time I prepared, I did it well. Second time I did not, so it was a flop. So it is very important for your first talk or your first session to be very successful for that you have to talk. In fact, all the talks, all the events, whatever you do, you have to take it seriously. I'm just giving an option. So, that is, so all these factors, if you take into consideration, 100% your talk is going to be good. And again, coming back to body language, uh, initially when you are talking, the biggest problem the students face, they don't know what to do with their hands. Boys, the hands go into the pocket, girls, they start fiddling with the buttons, right? So first time to avoid that, keep your hands back. Vishram position, you know? What is Vishram? Hands back. So three, four times when you use this technique, Vishram, and later, after you become a little comfortable, automatically your hand movement starts, your gestures they start and intonation comes back. Again I take you back to our PM Norman Mohan Singh. When you see his face, you don't find gestures. Gestures are very important. Whether you are sad or happy or whatever, your face has to speak. And again in communication, 70% of the meaningful conversation is done by your body language and 30% is only verbal. But now again that trend is changing. The reason is that now there is something called telephonic uh, interviews, have all of that. So when we have telephonic uh, interviews, it is very important, they cannot see your face. So then the body language takes a back seat. Then your clarity, your intonation comes into the picture. And the technology and all, again now we have conferences and all, video conference. Then again, both you are being seen your voice is being heard. So again, you have to mix your personality, your presentation, the way you dressed up while you're giving your interview. And then obviously the parameters, the ways you must talk, they come into the picture. Clear? So these things will make you a wonderful speaker, a great speaker, where the people will be mesmerized. And always remember whatever I said, it will not come in a day. Practice, practice and practice. And when I say practice, practice, it is not that for two hours, three hours you sit and do know. Maybe for three minutes, you watch TV, go for English programs, because right now, you are good in Telugu, your mother tongue. And interviews, they happen in which language? You know that, right? So which is the language? Now you have to give the priority. English, because it is a question of your job, it is a question of your bread and butter. Yeah? Okay. Now, a little bit of you will be talking. Now I want someone to come and again introduce themselves. After that, I will tell you what is the correct pattern of introducing yourself when you are giving your interview. Because when you go for interview, the first question, what is the first question? Yes. Tell me about yourself. Or tell me everything about yourself which is not in the resume. You have the two types of questions. First question is very easy. First you will start with the first question, tell me about yourself. And again, your self-introduction has to be practiced. But when you are delivering, it should not look as if you have practiced or rehearsed. To get that look, to get that sounding, whatever I spoke now, intonation is very important. Okay? Someone from this side about now? 
One and two is very good. Okay, two here. Yeah. Both of you come, you can sit over here. Okay. And uh, one more very important thing, when I told these two girls to come and sit, uh, did I say come and sit over here? I told them, you know what? When these two students are coming, is it compulsory for you to turn back and see? No. There is something called behavior or etiquette. There are few things we are supposed to do and few things we are not supposed to do. When we know the two girls, the two students who have volunteered, they would be coming over here or coming over here. Was there a need for you to turn back? No. These small things they make up, say I'm sorry. They make a difference. Uh, this reminds me around uh, 15 years back, there was some shooting in New Zealand and Australia. This is for your information. I was handling ILTS. So before you go for Australia or New Zealand, you have to answer the exam called ILTS. So some of the students, they cleared their ILTS and they went to New Zealand and all, and they, was, they were shot, the Indian students. So the people, the students who shot, when they were questioned, you know what thing they said? They said, these Indian students, they don't have etiquette. After the class, they just come up and stand anywhere and everywhere in the passage and it makes us difficult to walk. For us, it seems very simple, but that is how the world runs or works. So even it happens after the college home, you walk entire road, right? So those things, and suppose you're sitting on the steps, entire steps we cover, steps after walking, you have to leave the passage. So these small things, they make a big difference in the behavior. Yeah, in your behavior. A warm good morning to one another. Well, first of all, I thank you because whatever the speech you gave, we get we get the example in you. The language, the pause, everything, we get the example in you, ma'am. Myself, P. Vijay Asi, studying third JSC, B. Tech. My father name is Pekati Raj Mohan Garu. Mother name is P. Madhavi and my father is a politician. I have a sister and I, I aspire to become an IRS officer. Thank you. Very good. Super. Good evening. Good morning, ma'am. And good morning, one and all. My name is P. Vidya Maheshwari and I study here in third CSC. And I have my one brother. And he tells me that I learn from you and I want to be the role model for like you, ma'am. And I want to achieve a goal in my life. I have planned something in my life what to be what I have to become and I match some qualities in that is in you so I hope I can get something from you today. Thank you so much, thank you so much to get back. Wonderful, super. As I was mentioning when you come over here you tend to confuse. She knew it is good morning, it's just confusion, it happens. Three, four times if she'll come and speak, she will overcome that. Right? And uh, introduction, whenever you give an introduction, there is a proper pattern. First thing, let the marker down. Okay. Uh, have you heard where to use apostrophe? Where do we use? Belongs. This belongs to me. Right? This pen belongs to the teacher. Father's name. Most of you, not only over here, most of the colleges they say my father name, my mother name. What is the correct syntax? Father's name. Sir and name. How should you say? Father's, mother's name, teacher's book, Vinita's book, Shyam's book. So theoretically we know where to use apostrophe is, but most of the time, 99% of the students, this is one mistake they make. So if you implement that theory into practical, it will become okay. What is the one thing we have learned right now? Apostrophe S. How do you pronounce it? The sound. Father's name and mother's name. Okay. When you go for the interview, 
It is important to tell about your family to the interviewer, but is it important to tell your father's name and mother's name? No. And your interview has to be interesting. You have to give information about yourself, little about the family. That is very really important, but how much to give, I will tell you, all right? So the moment you enter the interview room, room, the first thing is going to be greetings. If one person, good morning sir or ma'am, or if it is group, you can say good morning one and all. Don't say good morning sirs and ma'am, so good morning one and all. Secondly, it is always wrong to say myself. We say myself, Rekha, it's not correct, grammatically it's wrong. This is Rekha, grammatically it is wrong. You can say I am Rekha. And again when I'm saying, when I'm speaking, I cannot say I am Rekha, no. When you are talking, there has to be little style, little grace. Remember, while you were in grade one, you wrote five sentences about yourself. I am Ravi, right? My father, I am a boy or I am a girl. How did you write? Baby sentences, but now you are engineers. Your language, your style has to be different. So when you are writing, you have to write I am. But when you are speaking, you have to stress a little on R. So you can start saying, am XYZ. So what is your first sentence going to be when you are introducing yourself to the interview? Yeah. Am XYZ. Next you have to tell you are from which place. You can say, am basically from Hyderabad. Am originally from Hyderabad. I hail from Hyderabad. What are the three words? Basically. Decide only on one word. If you practice your self introduction with all the three words, what will happen? You sit over there, then you will fumble about, oh my god, which word you use? Select one word right now, other two words, you drop it. At least till you get a job. And again, whenever you go for an interview, are the same people going to sit? No. So, it is don't use all the three words. I love originally and basically. Hey is. Shakespearean English, grammatically it is correct, we can use it, but if the interviewer he doesn't know, he may think that you are speaking nonsense, sometimes it has happened, right? So I tell my students use those words which are good, which are rich, but again people they know it. So you have to decide whether it is going to be basically or originally. So your first sentence is going to be, good morning everyone, I am XYZ, basically I am from Hyderabad, right? Then comes your next. As a fresher, when for the first time you introduce yourself, at least for one and a half minute you have to speak. If you are experienced, you have volumes to speak. But now the question arises, how to continue that one and a half minute? And self-introduction is one thing which can make you or which can break you. If your introduction is not okay, your morale will go down. And the person who's going to, who's taking your interview, he feels, oh my god, what is this? There is no clarity. This person doesn't know about himself or herself. And everything starts crumbling. So once your self-introduction is wow, once your self-introduction is historic, is beautiful, automatically the confidence comes. That is the first step for success. So you say, good morning. I'm Rex Faisal. I'm basically from Hyderabad. I did my schooling from Hyderabad and then I did my plus two from Delhi and currently I am studying XYZ. There are some cases where tenth you do in Hyderabad, then you do your plus two somewhere else, right? So those who are born and brought up in Vijayawara, and entire studies have happened in Hyderabad. Oh, sorry, Vijayawara, what do you say? I'm basically from Hyderabad. Since I am from Hyderabad, throughout I study in Hyderabad. Write it down. This introduction is very important. Yeah. And the introduction what I'm going to give you is very important. At any time, every time, close your eyes and you can give. And one more thing, different trainers will come, they will tell you. Talk about your strengths, talk about your weaknesses. No, during your self-introduction, you are not supposed to talk about your plus points or minus points. That is going to be a separate question. All set, pen and paper? First sentence would be greetings, right? Good morning, 
everyone. It depends on the time and how many people are there in the interview. Done? Next sentence will be, what did I tell? Yeah, while writing, you are you would be writing I am X, Y, Z. You write the complete grammatically correct sentence, but when you're speaking, start from am. Am, X, Y, Z, okay? Underline am and your name. So when you're talking, that is how you have to talk. Got it? What is the next sentence? Very good. And basically, and now you take a decision and you will write only one word. It is originally or basically. After that, don't change. Or else you will tend to confuse over there. And basically from, write it down. So I'm basically from Vijayawara. And here also we have different situations. I will give the sentences for all the three situations. Accordingly, you have to use it. I'm basically from Hyderabad or I'm basically from Vijayawada. Since I'm from Vijayawada, since I'm from Vijayawada, throughout I study in Vijayawada. So here what happens, your birthplace your birthplace and education is same, right? Your birthplace and your education is same. Again, I'm repeating. Basically, I'm from Hyderabad. Or basically, I'm from Vijayawada. Since I am from Vijayawada, throughout I study in Vijayawada. Now, it is very important for you to use these words since and throughout. These, okay, write it down, actually. All of you got the whole sentence on the situation? Words like since, throughout, and all, they are called discourse. What is it called? Discourse. Just for information, not for the interview. So once you start using these discourses, your sentences, your talk looks connected, coherent, and it sounds as if you are speaking in a normal way. It is very important. Unlike these words, you have to use it. You should not drop it. And if you use it in a wrong way, your sentence meaning will be wrong. Grammatically, as well as information-wise also. Next situation can be, I am basically from Hyderabad or I'm basically from Vijayawada. Okay, so basically I'm from Vijayawada. Though I am from Vijayawada, I studied in Chennai. Write it down and explain. Are you able to see? Is it coming in between? It's okay, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Your second sentence will be basically I am from Vijayawada. Though I am from Vijayawada, I study in Chennai. Here are the words basically and though are very important. The function of this and this is same. Clear? Okay. Another sentence 
Sandy. I am XYZ. Basically, I am from Vijayawada. Since I am from Vijayawada, till 10th I studied in Vijayawada. For my plus 2, I moved to Kota, Rajasthan. And for my engineering, I came back to Vijayawada. Something like that. I hope it's clear. Yeah. Any doubts? Okay. So then you can mention one or two sentences about the school also. So here you say, I am XYZ, basically I am from Vijayawada. Since I am from Vijayawada, throughout I studied in Vijayawada. I did my schooling from XYZ and my college from XYZ. Two or three sentences about your school, your plus two and current education. Is it done? So that is your first part. First part is your name, where you come from. Then you talk about your school, your plus two and your current education. With that, the first portion is over. Okay, then comes the second part. So here, what did you see? Your name. Yeah. Very good. Where you come from then? School plus two college. Now again it comes your second part. You have to connect this and this. Can you jump from here to here? No. Connection is needed. So you are saying So what you spoke, what you are going to speak, you have to connect it by saying, well, regarding my hobbies. And when you say, well, it has to be a little sing song way. You cannot say, well, regarding my hobbies. No, you say, well, how, how am I saying? Well, right? That again gives you the flow. It sounds very natural. So you say, well, regarding my hobbies or hobby. hobbies or hobby? Raise your hands. No hobby? No. Okay. How many of you have the hobbies? Raise your hands. Okay. Good. How many of you have the hobbies of watching TV? And this is what you are going to tell in the interview? No. One thing is important for you to know if you have the hobbies as TV and all, watching TV, please change it develop a new hobby, it is important for you because most of the time, most of the questions they ask on hobbies. If you don't have a hobby, create one hobby, at least you prepare one hobby, theoretically, or if you say cooking, boys can say cooking, if girls say my hobby is cooking, it is a little stereotype. But if you say, girls if they say cooking, you have to mention what type of cooking, cooking. Chinese, continental, what? Boys, you can say cooking, and again you have to specify what type of cooking. Whenever you are talking about your hobby or hobbies, at least four to five sentences you have to speak. If you say, my hobby is swimming, that is not enough. You, your sentence has to be, well, regarding my hobby, I love swimming. Use the word love, right? Write it down. So this is the correct well regarding my hobby. I love swimming. Or you write your hobbies, whatever it is. Okay. And after this, you have to mention what type of swimming. For example, in swimming, we have butterfly, then uh, backstroke, and all, right? You have to mention what is your famous swimming. If you say cooking, what exactly in continental? If you say continental, in continental, what exactly is your favorite dish? How good you are. If you say reading, what genre of books? Is it magazines or fictions or short stories or novels? 
It is a novel what sort of novels? Romantic, tragic, historic? At least three to four sentences you have to speak, that is you have to give the information. If you say stamp collection, they will ask you what is the term called for stamp collection? Well, how old is your, which is the oldest stamp? They will ask you questions. If you mention your hobby, you have to do research, you should have the information. Is it clear? Yeah? After this, what comes? Family. So again, from here to here you connected. From here to here again you have to connect. So here what do you say? Well, regarding my hobbies. So now here you can say, well, use the word about. Yes, same thing. About you are using. So your sentence has got variety. And when you are talking about your family, you should not mention the name of your parents, brothers, sisters. It is not required. You are going to work with a company. Your skills are important, not about your parents' names at all, right? But again, at the same time, they would like to know your family background. So here you say, well, about my family. Straight away you say, my father is a doctor, engineer, agriculturist, dress designer, lawyer, police, whatever. And my mom is a homemaker, teacher, doctor, nurse, scientist, right? Then straight away you say, I have got one elder brother who is office going, one younger sister who is school going. That is a four, five sentences about your family. Until and unless they ask you more. Don't give the names and don't say five members in the family. Generally most of the students, how do they start? There are five members in the family, it is not required. Straight away mention your profession of your parents. What is your elder brother doing? What is your younger brother doing? That is it. And then you say, you close the conversation by saying, that's all about me. How would you close it? Yeah. And always remember, whenever you start a conversation, there is something called opening the conversation and there is something called closing the conversation. What is it called? So opening the conversation, good morning, good afternoon, namaste, sister, whatever it is, and closing the conversation, thank you, bye, have a great day. Again, that terminology depends on whom you are talking to. Can you say bye to a teacher? Formally, we are not supposed to, right? These things are very important. And again, when you go for the interviews, choose proper professional words. You cannot say hi everyone in the interview, no. You are not supposed to. People may sound, people may say the times have changed, we have to change. Let me tell you, at the end of the day, it is always we are traditional. For example, your junior, you are in third year and fourth years, right? If the first year comes and says or calls you by your name, will you like it? No. You are from this generation, will you like it? You would prefer Akka or Anna. Same thing happens, people may talk about generation gap, technology. It is not done. Always be safe, always play safe, stick to tradition in some areas. So this is your proper self-introduction. Any problem? Any, uh, is it clear? Now, uh, any doubts? Now, I will give you five minutes. You will prepare and I may ask anyone to come and deliver. And this time I am going to pick, you are not going to volunteer. Right? Just five minutes you will get. And again, this is not a group work, this is not a team work. You concentrate and you will do it. No sharing the information. If you have any doubt, ask me, I will be coming. Out. 
And again, people ask you, what is your good name? In English, there is nothing called good name and bad name. In Hindi, we have, aapka shubh naam kya hai? In English, it is wrong. Most of the people, they don't know. So, ever, never use the word, this is Rekha, my son Rekha. What is your good name? Absolutely wrong. Okay? So, when I was mentioning, your self-introduction should not look like practiced one I met in the delivery. That means your pauses, your intonation, your flow, and using the words what I gave over there, since, though, throughout, these things if you use, automatically the beauty of the language comes in. Right here. Wonderful questions. Any doubts, just sign up, I'll come to you, okay? supposed to mention the questions. Self-introduction is just about yourself, then the questions will follow your strengths, your weaknesses, what are the projects you have done, those things. Interview skills will be coming. Okay? Yeah. Uh, one question is that, what is hobby? Hobby is what you don't do regularly, you do it as a passion. You do it, for example, music. Do you sing every time? No. When you are learning, you have to practice, but once it's a hobby, whenever you are free, whenever you are tired, you do it. Every time, no need to do it. Uh, cooking. When you cook, just normal rice, sambar, dal, that cooking is not your hobby. When you make continental, when you make mionis or musse like this, this, that is your hobby. It is not always, but you love to do it. You wait for the chance to do it. That is hobby. And when you are uh, talking about your hobby, at least four or five sentences has to be there. What hobby is it? Why you like it? If, for example, cricket. What do you like in cricket? Batting, bowling, all those things? In that way. Did you, at least five sentences I want you to write. And don't spend so much time on thinking. Start writing. Most of the time I see the students, if I give a topic, they are busy thinking, and by the time they think, it goes off. And when I take the classes to the students, I just tell them, 10 seconds, decide a topic. We will do that, right? We will be discussing jam session, group discussion, all those things we will be touching upon. not mention our aims and aspirations. Uh, in the interview, you would be having two types of questions. Tell me everything about yourself. And the next question will be, tell me everything about yourself which is not in the resume. And when he asks or she asks, tell me everything which is not in your resume, then you can talk about your strengths, your weaknesses, your dreams, your desires and your aspirations. Uh, in the resume, you are not supposed to write your aims and ambitions, let me tell you. In your resume, you would be writing your name, your contact number, and you would be furnishing your marks, which university, what is the percentage, and what are the projects you did. That's it. If you put everything over there, you have to give time to the interviewer to ask you questions. So, in the resume, on the CV, it has, or it is limited. In the interview, they will ask you your weaknesses, your strengths, your aims, five years from now, where you want to see yourself, all those things will follow. Again, I repeat, your resume will have your name, your parents' name, your contact number, and again, right from 10 till the current qualification, it has to be there. Most of the people, they write strengths, weaknesses, everything in the resume. No, it's wrong. And again, most of the trainers, they have different ideas different views. So I cannot say someone is right or someone is wrong. But it is not required. Right? Yeah.
are from Delhi and you are studying in Vijayawada, how are you going to say? So here you say I am XYZ. Basically, I am from Delhi. Though I am from Delhi, I am settled in Vijayawada. Right? Again I repeat, I am XYZ. Basically, I am from Delhi. Though I am from Delhi, I am settled in Vijayawada. Something like that. Good morning everyone. I am Sadram Kumar. Basically, I am from Guntur. Though I am from Guntur, I studied in Vijayawada. Well, regarding my hobbies, I used to play cricket. I like batting. I find it challenging to bat when bowler bowls me. Well, about my family, my father's name is Ravindra Babu. My mother's name is Shailika. That's all about me. Good morning to one and all. I am Nathani I am based in from Mangalgiri. Though I am from Mangalgiri, I studied in Vijayawada. Well, regarding my hobby, I love listening music. Well, about my family, my father is a manager and my brother is a housewife. And my brother is studying in Vijayawada. One preposition, you always listen to music. Listen. Most of the students, they don't use the word to across book everywhere, right? So what is the proposition you should use? To. Someone asked me a question, suppose you studied in different schools. So you say, since my father had a government job, which was transferable, I studied in different schools across the nation. Yeah, I, since my father was a government job, often he got transferred, so I did my schooling in different places. Yeah? And one question someone asked, when you are mentioning your name, your surname should follow your name or your name should be followed, right? So whatever you wrote in the resume, it is okay. No hard and fast rule. For example, I am CH Rekha Rao. I can say Rekha Rao CH or CH Rekha Rao. It doesn't make a difference. It is always better, whatever you wrote in the resume, that is what you speak. So the coordination or the registering will be not easy. So what you are going to mention in the interview, your name has to be like that. Yeah, any questions? Now I'll give you two minutes. You will come over there and you will introduce yourself, then we'll go to the next topic. Okay, you will come over there without your note copy. And the two students who spoke, they really spoke well. They were opening their mouth. Did you notice it was loud? Clear intonation was also there. This is what I was looking. The information what I gave, obviously, since you did not have the time to prepare, I was looking basically for the quality talk which they were using it. It was clear, it was there was clarity, there was intonation as well. I will call anyone and you will go over the dials and you will introduce yourself, right? Any more questions? You can come and ask me your issues. Raise your hand and I will come to you. Vijayawada. Hence, throughout I studied in 
studying in Hyderabad or Vijayawada or something like that. Again, I repeat, since I am from Vijayawada, throughout I study in Vijayawada and currently I am studying in this engineering college which is in Vijayawada. The sentence composition will change, right? If one word changes, the we call it syntax. Syntax is the arrangement of the words that will also change. So it is very important for you to make a proper self-introduction and stick to that. Don't make the changes of it. Now, shall we go to group discussion? Yeah? Okay. How many of you have attended any group discussion classes? Okay. I want someone to come and tell me what exactly have you seen in that particular group discussion. Anyone? Lots of hands went up over there. Anyone here? Others? No need to turn back. Just never mentioned they will come here and speak, right? Anyone from back? I want to know what have you experienced. It's very important for me to know. Shall I come there or you have to come? Yeah. A proper way how to speak and how to interact, uh, how to start the group discussion, and how to conclude it. And in the in the middle part.